Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna start streaming now. Um, every 17 again. And we are in the middle of playing as the kid. Um, we finished Sora's storyline last episode, I believe. And um, now we are playing as kid, which we haven't done before. And uh, we're going for Yu's route. So, so far, summary is Kid and Yu had adventures in um, Explosion, I think. That's what that says. <laughs> Sorry. Brian wrote these. Anyway. <laughs> um, we had adventures in Explosion together. Kid has a special scar on his hand. We met Sara, uh, nicknamed Mayo, someone who didn't appear at all in Takeshi's route, and was a student trapped in the facility as well with everybody else. Most of the exploration is with Kid, you, and Sarah. No Takeshi or Sora yet. Um, I don't even know if we saw Sugumi. Did we see Sugumi? I don't know. No. Oh, maybe we did. I, I can't remember. <laughs> anyway. Um, Alright. So, let's see. Just making sure I got everything ready to go. And, alright. So, I decided to check Dritter stock from end to end. You and Sarah were probably investigating upstairs. The rest area. I noticed immediately that the scenery was different from the morning. The pond in the middle was covered with a lid. Or more of a partition of sorts than a lid. In either case, the pond was no longer connected to the ocean. The Lemieux commuter, computer that you had talked about might have automatically sealed it off. The tuna sandwich stand. Oh my god, don't we love this tuna sandwich stand. Oh my god. There was still a slight scent of cooked tuna in the air. The second I smelled it, my stomach started to growl. I glanced around. No one was there. I thought I might eat, but I didn't want to do anything criminal. <laughs> I once I swallowed once and left that area behind. The conference room. There was nothing but really out of the ordinary there, but I did pick up on one thing. The room was not flooded with seawater. The elevator entrance had stopped the water. The tuna sandwich stand, the fragrance of the food tickling my nose, the control room, the room that spared flooding, uh, was also spared by flooding by its elevated entrance. Um, the chair that you had knocked over, uh, the chair that you had knocked over was as she had left it. <laughs> um, I put it back where it should be and I checked the room and left. The tuna sandwich stand. <laughs> Just have a bite, dude! <laughs> The smell just wouldn't quit teasing me. The Lemurian ruins. You had passed through where, uh, passed through there just a little before. Just to be sure, I peeked into the shadows of the stone pillars behind the buildings, but I couldn't find anything resembling a pathway. The tuna sandwich stand. We've zoomed in onto the tuna sandwich stand, by the way, so it's kind of weird. That smell. Oh, I couldn't take it anymore. I slyly extended my hand towards the case holding the warm tuna sandwiches. The situation called for extreme measures. I kept telling myself that as I munched and swallowed down the sandwich. With that, I had finished uh, checking Dritterstock. <sighs> Didn't look like there was any hidden corridors to be found or anyone trapped there besides the three of us. I wondered how things were above. Maybe it was just like you had said. Maybe there was no point in looking. It was still before our meeting time, but I went back to our rendezvous point in front of the control room. And when I got there, there was a surprise waiting for me. Hey, look, it's Takeshi and Sara! 7.06 p.m. Hey! Uh, how did I do her voice? Hello! <laughs> Just like a high-pitched thing, I guess. I forgot. It's been too long. Huh? Who? Who? Who are you? What? You forgot us already? What in the world? I felt like I had met them before. I was pretty sure of it, but... Uh... And your name is? I couldn't remember it. Nah, I don't think I've introduced myself yet. I'm Karanari Takeshi, and this here is... The guy named Takeshi pointed at the girl. I'm Akanagasaki Sora. Sora. She gave a slight nod. Takeshi and Sora. I repeated the words. They both nodded. But what are you doing here? Yaho! What's going on here? You don't have to be so surprised, do you? 
Just a bit ago, when I was walking around Twiderstock with Mayo, we bumped into these three. So, you're stuck here too, huh? Uh, yes. <laughs> That's right. Huh? Wait a sec, didn't you say three people? Yeah. See? Right over there. I followed the direction of Yu's finger. Someone was standing on the opposite end of the wall along the corridor. It's gloomy sagumi. I could only make out half of the person's back, but I saw long hair and black clothes, and it left an impression. Who's that? Oh, you mean Komachi-san? Oh, Komachi Sugumi, I think it was. Sugumi, so that was her name. She wore all black. It didn't sound familiar, but still. I feel like I've met her somewhere before. Do you know her? No, it's not that. It's probably just my imagination. It's just somehow... Something... something? Anyway, she's pretty tough to get along with. I'm not sure why, but it seems like she doesn't like me very much. Doesn't like you? I could feel a slight animosity emanating from Sugumi's back. She didn't have anything to say. There was a definite atmosphere which made her approaching her difficult. Maybe I'll go talk to her. Just as I thought that... <laughs> just as that thought crossed my mind, Sugumi shot a glance in our direction. She had piercing eyes and an intimidating gaze. With her glare eating into me, I couldn't take even one step forward. There was no way I could talk with her. What was that all about? Why is she so angry? I haven't done anything to make her hate me. Sugumi's gaze returned to normal. Cold beads of sweat appeared on my forehead. Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, that reminds me. Where's Sarah? Having realized she wasn't around, I glanced around the room. Without noticing it, Sarah had come to stand behind me at some point. Okay, I'm, I have the choice now of saying worry or don't worry. And I'm gonna choose don't worry. But her expression somehow didn't seem fine. I was probably expect- it was probably to be expected though. All kinds of things had happened, and in the end, we hadn't found an exit. Mentally, we were all pretty well done in. I thought that I should probably leave her alone for the time being. Anyway, just standing around isn't going to get us anywhere. Let's see what the situation in Lemu is right now, via the control room. Sora said that and pointed to the control room right across from us. Encouraged by Sora, we all shuffled into the room. 7.13pm. <laughs> Four minutes have passed. I think that took me longer to read, but okay, anyway. So, Sora, do you understand this? Well, let's see. Sora faced the monitor and held up both hands. Instantly, the content of the screen began to change, with the number of windows opening and closing while the search for the data was underway. I stared dully at her rapidly moving hands. It looked like Sora was fairly used to handling the computer. For one thing, we weren't there weren't any flying chairs or heel stomping. <laughs> That's right. You hate computers. Um, it was completely different from the way you had handled things a while ago. I've learned something. Sora said it with a business-like manner. She seemed done with the computer. Everyone looked in her direction. Everyone, please calm down and listen to me. I wonder if this is skippable because... It is! Yes! Oh, thank God we can skip in this line. I guess we're learning about our situation. Cool. Oh, I was so worried that I was going to have to read all that crap again. <laughs> so basically, I think this is just a summary of like where we're at in this prison now. <laughs> That reminds me, what happened to Sugumi? She hasn't said anything at all. I looked back. Sugumi was standing in a corner of the room, glaring at us. Like before, there was an atmosphere around here that seemed impenetrable. Really? Why is she so peeved? A little while later. But, well, getting depressed isn't going to solve anything, is it? I'm gonna try fast forwarding. I can't. Okay. <laughs> you can hear me try. As many times as I possibly can to fast forward because this is a lot. <laughs> anyway, let's be positive. Positive is the word. Everyone, uh, all right, everybody? You broke the silence with her energetic pep talk, but no one responded. Now, quit looking so depressed. Even if we're floating in the middle of the Pacific, it's not as if we're lost in a blizzard. So what? I. So I mean, if we wait a few hours, help will probably come. How do you know that? Well, think about it. I don't know why, but we've been trapped inside this cramped complex. On top of that, I don't we don't have any way to contact the outside. But you know, 
Even if we can't contact anyone, someone else probably will. Like who? Oh, that's right. You mean like your colleagues, or Sarah's classmates, or teachers. You gave a big nod as if to say, that's right. And Kurinari, you weren't alone when you got here either, right? Well, that's true. The people in the floating island, uh, people on the floating island should have noticed a long time ago that we're still down here. Yep. So, I don't know if it'll be a rescue team or a search team or what, but anyway, somebody should come to help us soon. So, satisfied? Sarah, Sora, oh god, Sarah and Sora. Fuck this. <laughs> Takeshi and I all nodded. Uh, hope returned to everybody's faces. Only Sugumi only kept her cold gaze trained on us. Alright, 7.25pm. We all moved to the conference room together. There was something unnerving about waiting for help in the dimly lit control room, and there weren't that many chairs for us to start with. I wondered if there was a place in one of the dry areas where everyone could relax. Nope. Okay. <laughs> the closest one was the conference room where we were at. Hey, Sora, how come you know so much about Lemu? I asked Sora, who was sitting next to me. Probably because I am a system engineer at Lemu's research and development division. Basically, the assistant chief. Assistant chief? So you're pretty high up. This sounds familiar. I can fast forward a little bit. Okay. Takeshi says, so that means there are two employees from Lemu down here. Two? I mean you. Well, I'm not really an employee, it's just a part-time thing. And Kurinari, you just came for fun? Uh, what other reason would someone have for coming to a theme park? And Sarah? I'm, well, I'm here as a volunteer. Huh? Volunteer? It's an event for juniors at Kumecon. Okay. I'm bad at Japanese too, so. <laughs> bad at German and Japanese. The whole gamut. Uh. But it's basically just for fun. Hmm. Huh? Without thinking, I let out a cry. <laughs> for some reason, something bothered me. <laughs> Everybody here, you're not all friends, right? No way, we just met. So then why are you talking to Kurinari like your old friends? And Takeshi is talking to you guys the same way. Oh, that's right, you don't know. What? So when we all met up on Zweiderstock, we introduced ourselves. Oh, so that's it. Yep, that's it. Hmm, still, it seems strange how they're all so friendly for having just met. That's what I thought. What about you? What's your name? Huh? I'm pretty sure we haven't heard it, heard it yet. I'm... 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 An assassin, that's what he is. Uh, assassin? He's being hunted by the overworld. He's being hunted by the underworld. I'm, I'm not being hunted. I told you to quit taking things so seriously, but you just don't get it. Alright, I'll explain for him. Actually, he... He's got amnesia. Let me see if I can skip. No, I can't skip. I can't skip it. Uh. Amnesia? You gave them a brief explanation of my situation. Thank God I don't have to explain what amnesia is. She told them how I'd forgotten my name, address, family, and friends, and that I'd only remembered the date and everything after meeting you. After listening to the explanation, Sora said, It sounds like it's probably complete amnesia, a type of retrograde block. Complete, am uh, complete amnesia, it's also called retrograde life amnesia. While general education and knowledge remain intact, uh, one's name, background, family, and friends, all aspects of one's life history are wiped completely from one's memory. Normally, one's memory returns within a few days or months. Hypnotism and electric shock therapy are also said to be effective means. <laughs> electric shock? <laughs> Relax. To put it another way, this type of amnesia usually solves itself naturally. So, for now, you really shouldn't worry or think too much about it. That's really the best medicine for you. See? It's just like I said, right? Don't worry, things will be fine. So there you have it. You say it like it's somebody else's problem. 
that's not what I meant. I mean, memory is a weird thing. Sometimes when you're think, uh, thinking about something entirely different, boom, you just remember. Just like with celebrities, you know their face, but you can't remember their name. Yeah, I wonder if that's just the way it works. So, how far back do you remember, anyway? How far back? Yeah. You knew Sora and my faces. <laughs> my faces, right? <laughs> that's a weird way to phrase that. And you remembered my name. How far? How far back? I searched my memory for the earliest point I could remember. There was a point I could still remember and a point where I had forgotten. Different images floated in my mind as if to provide an answer. That was it. I'd lost my memory when I fell into the pond at the rest area. That had to be it. I couldn't remember anything before that. And I remembered everything after that. So that tumble into the pond was the line between memory and non-memory. My consciousness was cut off at that moment. I think it probably happened when I fell into the pond. I announced that to everybody. By pond, do you mean the pond at the rest area? I think so. You don't remember anything before that? No vague images or anything come to mind? Like the scenery around your house or the girl you like? On TV, you sometimes see dramas about people who don't remember anything but who instinctively know things. I get it. Like the guy that paints like a pro the instant he takes up a brush? Yeah, like that. So, maybe you should try to see and touch lots of things? Yeah, what should we have him do first? The conversation about me went around me. My temples were throbbing. My face was distorted with the pain. Uh, wait a second. Sora just said it, right? You really shouldn't worry or think too much about it. If you put too much pressure on him, the mental stress will turn him into a wreck. A wreck? Like mental overload, maybe? Sometimes he starts groaning like he's in pain and then he suddenly collapses. Is that right? So when it comes to things like having to do with his memory, take it easy. Or you gently placed her hands on my head. And when she did, it was strange, but it seemed to suck away the pain. Okay, got it. Now, let's talk about something else. Um, something's been bothering me for a while. What do you suppose- What do you suppose we should call him? Oh yeah, something- We should probably decide to call him something, or else it'll be kind of a pain. How about John? It'd be fitting to call him John Doe. But wouldn't calling him that just because it's fitting to be rude to all the people named John Doe? Well, it doesn't have to be... It's only for a little while, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's call him Sniper. <laughs> Why are you so hung up on that? He's not that kind of guy at all. Well, how about John Mitochondria? <laughs> I don't get it. Let's see. Let's think of another one. How about Mellow-san? What, what's Mellow-san supposed to mean? Like, short for memory loss. Nah, it's bad luck to name him that. Sorry, I didn't mean to be so direct. Not you. Why don't you have any ideas? Well, how about Kid A? The Radiohead album? <laughs> That makes him sound like he's a convict or something. Then, Kid B. It is the Radiohead album. <laughs> What's the difference? How about Acid Astiani Kumigawa? I don't know what that is. Astiani Kumigawa. How about Memories On? Enough with this. Something simple is just fine. We could call him Kid Q. Hey you, which one do you like? All of them? Stink. <laughs> uh, don't be so picky, these are tough times for everybody. Well... Okay, now I have a choice of like, all of these names. Mikami Tomoya, Ishihara Makoto, Fukuyama Naoto, Hayasagawa Shina, Inamura Motoki, Inami Ken, 
Watarase Kyosuke and Prince. Okay. I feel like Prince. I don't know who these people are, unfortunately, but I know who Prince is. <laughs> and so that's my vote. Doesn't matter, but I'm sure this is important to someone. I like Prince. <laughs> Prince? No way. Forget it. You gotta be kidding. I can't concur. I mean, it doesn't suit you. <laughs> oh, this is a pain. We'll just call him Kid. Just then. Crash. Enough. Scooby pounded the table and stood up. Just what are you trying to do? What are you all thinking? What? We're thinking of a name. Stop goofing off. The room went quiet. We all looked at each other. Yeah, she's right. The first one to open her mouth was you. We're not thinking about his feelings at all. We just got a little carried away. That's not what I mean. Well, Kamachi-san, what would you suggest that we call him? See, it's tough to think of a name. Fine, do what you want. Sukumi said that in disgust and left the room. What's up with her? Why is she so angry? Takeshi, did you do something to make her mad at you? I didn't. I don't get it. She's been like that since we met. It appears that we should be a little bit careful of how we treat Komachi-san. Let's just be patient. When she sees that we don't have any ill will or hostile feelings, things will probably resolve themselves. I felt as if something was controlling me. The next thing I knew, I found I was rushing out of the room. Down the corridor, Sugumi was kicking water as she walked. I didn't know where she was headed, so I called out to her back. Hey, wait! Sugumi didn't stop. There was no sign that she would look back. Sugumi! Sugumi! When I finally caught up with her, I put my hand on her shoulder. Don't touch me. Can you please not touch me? Sugumi stopped walking and said it in a small voice. Sorry. Apologizing, I took my hand off of her shoulder. What do you want? Alright, so now I have a choice of, why are you so angry? And I haven't even introduced myself. And I'm going to choose... Why are you so angry, girl? I'm gonna see the water. Why are you so angry? God. I wondered why you're so angry, and I jumped directly to the point. <laughs> you're funny. You don't know why I'm angry. I don't. <sighs> Listen, cut it out. I've had enough of that. Just drop it. Of this? Don't pretend like you don't know, please. I'm not pretending. I see through you. I know everything. I don't believe it. I never thought that you'd join up with those guys. Those guys? Join up? You were just talking about amnesia, right? Yeah. <laughs> so how do you know those guys? We explained all of that just a bit ago. I remember meeting you. Weren't you listening? Don't lie to me. Suddenly, Sugumi raised her voice. That's stupid. Anyway, I'm not falling for it. Don't you ever talk to me again, got it? With that, Sugumi strolled away. After, uh, I couldn't think, I couldn't find the words to stop her. I stared after her shrinking back in silence. 7.48 PM. When I returned to the conference room, there was a three-dimensional image of Lemu in the center of the table. You, Sarah, Sora, and Takeshi were looking at it and discussing something intensely. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> Welcome back, kid. What happened to Sugumi? I shook my head. I told you she's difficult, huh? That time I nodded. Sugumi was difficult for sure. I had no idea what she was thinking. There was no point in prying any more into Sugumi's situation. I asked them again. So, what are you guys talking about? I mean, just now. The cause of the current situation and what steps we should take from now. That's what we were discussing. Oh, the cause of the accident and steps to take, huh? 
Hey, do you mind filling me in on what you came up with? You can keep it simple. Sure. Well then, allow me to explain the accident one more time. Saying that, Sora touched the holographic image above the table. Can I skip this? And then she said, 12.45 p.m. Alright, come on, I can't skip this, come on. 12.45 p.m. Lemu was suddenly struck by a blackout. The cause is unclear. Oh wait, this is all in Sora's voice, my bad. I'm just gonna read it normal. <laughs> Sora's reading this. Immediately after that, the emergency evacuation order was issued. The cause of this was unclear as well. In any case, evacuation by Lemu by visitors and employees was initiated at this point. Uh, 12.55 p.m. The emergency doors were activated. What does that mean? It is referencing to the emergency escape exits connected directly to the floating island. These are located at the very upper part of the emergency stairs. Normally, except under extreme circumstances, this door is not opened. But you're saying that it was opened? Yes. What exactly does except in extreme circumstances mean? I can't say for sure, but... In the manual, it is written that in case of an emergency, it is necessary to temporarily hold visitors in the decompression chamber. Why? But... What if you have to escape in a hurry? Why do you have to stop in the decompression chamber? In order to prevent decompression sickness... Decompression sickness? When there's a sudden decrease in pressure, the nitrogen that has dissolved in a person's blood turns to gas and can cause blood clots that interfere with circulation. Uh, I'll explain that later. For now, let me continue on this topic, alright? Sure. Anyway, what you're saying is that these doors shouldn't be opened, that shouldn't be opened, we're opened, is that it? That is correct. This is the only, this is only my best educated guess, but it would appear that one of the visitors probably panicked and manually opened the emergency airtight doors in the confusion, and then the door was not closed, but was left open. Accordingly, the rough six atmosphere mixture of gas inside was suddenly released outside the room. Sora continued her explanation. 2.39 p.m. Helium, since it is lighter than oxygen and nitrogen, was released first. An internal pressure dropped the most equivalent of the external pressure at one atmosphere. 3.55 p.m. Water leak occurs. Lamu is a structure designed based on saturation diving specifications. Saturation diving specifications? What's that mean? To make the exter internal pre air pressure equal to or greater to the external water pressure, in order to keep the unit from being crushed by seawater. <laughs> I hope you guys appreciate me reading all this difficult crap. So, that is what it means. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so basically the pressure has to be equalized in order to descend further into the ocean. Got it. Okay, so I'm gonna say, um, I get it or not really. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. I think I get it. Well then, why was there flooding? Yeah, that's right. Couldn't it be that Lemu was made to keep the internal air pressure and external water pressure the same so it wouldn't be crushed, right? But if the air pressure completely escaped, then the air pressure dropped to one atmosphere. Then wouldn't the pressure of the seawater push in and finally there would be some tear somewhere, seawater would come rushing in? You are almost correct. <laughs> Impressive, kid son. Are you sure you're suffering from amnesia? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I have nothing left to add. The sudden decrease in air pressure is the major cause of this flood mishap. Subsequently, in order to minimize damage, Lemu automatically closed its watertight doors. So we're all trapped in here. Yes. <laughs> Maybe it was big. Oh, sorry. Maybe it was because I had jumped into a complicated discussion, but somewhere in my head felt like it was tearing. But, thinking back on Sora's explanation, there were only two key points. The reason for the complex blackout was unclear, and the reason for the drop in air pressure was why we had sprung a leak. Huh, wait, hold on a second. Takeshi, who had been listening quietly until then, spoke. So, this here is one atmosphere of pressure. Yes, that's correct. Why do you... So, does that mean that this voice alternator thing that we're wearing like we don't need it anymore no that 
please, keep wearing it. Why? The helium gas is mostly gone, right? Only you remain silent. It looked like she was awkwardly avoiding my gaze. <laughs> anyway, please, just don't take them off. Why not? What reason is there? The reason... The reason is... Well, if Sora says so, that should be good enough. I'm still wearing it, and I don't have any problem with it. This, vo this voice alternator... Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> um... Well, that's for sure. I almost had forgotten I was wearing it. See? Anyway, more importantly, we should be talking about what we're going to do now as our next step. At least that's in my opinion. Next step, huh? After that, we crossed our arms and started brainstorming, but we couldn't come up with even a single good idea. Don't I know what that feels like, jeez. In the end, I guess all we can do is wait to, for help to come. Of course, there was no reason to expect a differing opinion. 8.36 p.m. Nearly an hour had passed since Sugumi had left the room. Sora had said that she was going to try and think of a plan and went back to the control room. The remaining four of us didn't have anything to say or do and continued to wait for contact or help from the outside. Sugumi hasn't come back. Sarah muttered that. I wondered if this was a good idea to leave her alone like this. I don't think that there's anything good about it. Hey, kid, you followed after Sugumi a bit ago, right? Yeah. She didn't say where she was going or anything. Uh, no. She didn't mention anything. Oh well. You want me to look for her? As if Yu's words were a sign, I stood up. For some reason, Yu had made it straight for the control room. Huh? Why the control room? You don't remember? When we gathered in the control room before, Sora had said something, right? By searching for life readings or bio signs of such and such. She said that? Yep. She for sure did say that. <laughs> Weren't you listening? I thought I was, but... So, why don't we do a bio scan for life? We'll probably know where Sugumi is right away. Hmm. Bio scan. It seemed like one difficult word after another was being thrown at me. Tell me about it, buddy. I wondered if it was part of the amnesia. There were so many words and phenomena and systems and stuff there that I was at a loss. <sighs> Without thinking, I let out a sigh. Incidentally, there was another thing that I had that hadn't been that I hadn't been able to understand. Somewhere along the line, everyone had taken to calling me kid. That random decision-making process to find a consensus on my name ended up with me being called Kid. Well, it's better than John Mitochondria, anyway. But still, it was all hard for me to understand. <sighs> I sighed again and followed everyone into the control room, shaking my head. Hey, is something wrong? Sora tilted her head, looking quizzically as we shuffled into the room. Well, we just didn't think that we could leave Sugumi alone like this. Yeah, so we thought that if we could get you to do another bio scan. Oh, I see. So that's it. You want me to investigate the location of Komachi-san then? Please wait a moment. A map of Lemu was displayed on the monitor. It enlarged and reduced in size. Spid, uh, uh spid? What's spid? <laughs> Slid and spun. Sorry. <laughs> And the image switched and changed into a dizzying way. Hey, Sora. Will you actually know where Sugumi is just by running a bio search for her? Yes. Humans are homeothermic animals, meaning that they consistently maintain a temperature of around 36 degrees Celsius. That body temperature can be detected using infrared radiation. Via this technique, we can affirm the location and number of humans in the Lemu complex. See? There it is. There is an uncertain bit of light in Twiterstock. There's no mistake, that's Komachi-san. Below that, in a room in Dritterstock, there were also a number of light emanating points overlapping. I figured that was probably the control room. Huh? What is... Just then, I noticed something strange. In the corner of the monitor, it said, Life Readings, 7. It was displayed in small letters. Um... What is it? 
Isn't there something strange about this number? See, I pointed to the corner of the monitor. Life readings, seven. Seven? 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 Well, why? There should have been a total of six people trapped in Lemu. You, Sarah, Sora, Sugumi, Takeshi, and me. However, the main computer, Lemu, was indicating that there were seven people. Someone's missing. I don't know if you guys have realized that somebody's missing. <laughs> but, anyway. What in the world? And then? Life readings, five. Life readings, seven. Life readings, six. Five, seven, six, five, seven, six. The numbers changed by the second. And always the number six, plus or minus one. Well, why is this happening? Flustered and out of character, Sora was busily operating the console. But the numbers continued to fluctuate and there was no sign that they would stop. I shifted my eyes to the point uh, to the points of light on the map. Even if the life reading numbers had changed, the numbers of light didn't increase or decrease. If the number really is seven, then... That means that there's another person here that we didn't get out in time. Yeah, assuming that seven is the right number... Hold on, everybody. Calm down. <laughs> Thank you, Takeshi. For a while, I watched the number switch. Finally, it stopped on the number six. Life readings, six. Huh? It stopped on six. It's probably broken or something. N no, it, it shouldn't be. Anyway, it looks like it settled on six, so that's probably the right number, right? <laughs> it makes sense. Thinking about it, it's hard to imagine anyone else in here. But... But what, kid? We looked all over Lemu. And we didn't meet anyone. That's true, but... Well, either way, we can check by walking around the complex, right? But first, we need to go secure Sugumi. <laughs> secure? You mean save? Um, saving is removing an object from danger. Securing is removing danger itself. Is Sugumi really that dangerous? Oh, that's right. I haven't told Sarah, you, and you two about that crazy girl, have I? No. No. Alright, well it's time to think of a way of securing Sugumi. <laughs> Are you ready? We climbed up the emergency stairs, aiming for the floor that Sugumi was on. Only Sora remained in the control room, thinking of ways to escape, trying to re-establish communications, rechecking the complex, and trying to get the other systems that were back- that were down back online. 8.52 p.m. It's weird because that's close to what the time is right now. <laughs> um, we arrived at Swiderstock, and when we did, a voice came from the speaker above the corridor. Right now, Kamachi-san seems to be in the security office. I figured Sora was using the complex's intercom system to announce Sugumi's location. Got it. Security office, huh? Takeshi said that, with a f uh, said that towards the ceiling. Me. On the way to the office, you said, Hey, Coronari, I got an idea. I think this is, this thing is, well, better with just girls. Just girls? I think Mayo and I should go. That way it might be easier to talk to Sugumi. Mayo, you're okay with that, right? Sure, I'm fine with that. Why, why can't Takeshi and I come along? This is the kind of thing that gets messy when there are guys around. Four against one triggers fear, you know? Fight or flight reactions. That and let's call it female intuition. Intuition? I got a hunch that Mayo and I can fix this misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, huh? That's what it is, isn't it? We haven't done anything to make her angry, so... That's true. It might be better to just let the two girls go instead of going in a big group. For some reason, I didn't have any confidence in my ability to get Sugumi to open up to us. And I was sure that this type of thing wasn't uh, one of Takeshi's strong points either. 
Well, then I guess I'll leave it up to you two. And with that, you and Sora headed to the security office. Takeshi and I were left in the middle of the corridor. At a loss of what to do. So, what now? What do you say? Want to wait in front of the security office? I don't think that would accomplish anything, but... Then what? I don't know. Well, for now, we can take a look around. I've had enough of that. Well, I haven't. You, Sora, and I walked so much that we were just about wearing holes in our shoes. Spider stock, dritter stock, everywhere. Oh, in that case, why don't you give the merry-go-round a shot? I don't know, two guys on the merry-go-round sounds kinda... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I've decided to take a look around inside Leiru. I'm the kind of guy that just has to see things with his own two eyes. So Takeshi and I split up to search. We agreed to meet up at 9.30 p.m. We, meet, uh, we were to meet in front of the security office. 9.19 p.m. Leimu has three layers below the ocean surface. Ersterboden, Zweiderstock, and Dritterstock. I wonder if I can skip this. Yes, thank god I can skip this. Well, then how about it's a ten-story building? The depth of Zweiderstock only amounts to 34 meters. 34 meters? Um, I have the choice of saying, even that would be impossible, or... I might be able to handle that. I'm gonna say, even that would be impossible. I think even that would be impossible. I think you are probably correct. So basically, what you're trying to say is that we can't escape by swimming, right, Sora? Yes! I guess in the end, all we can do is wait for help to arrive. That's what it comes down to. Okay, so now... 9.35 p.m. As I was so involved with my chat with Sora, I had missed the appointed meeting time. I left the control room and headed towards the meeting point in front of the security office, but... Takeshi was nowhere to be seen. Hey! Takeshi! I called out to him, but there was no answer. Glancing at the open door in the security office, I saw that it was open. I decided to take a peek inside the room. No one was there. Not you, Sora, or Sugumi. Hey! Sora! Sora! Everybody, where are you? I looked out the bare ceiling and called out. I figured Sora would be in the control room monitoring me, but apparently she wasn't. The speakers in the ceiling remained painfully silent. Hmm. I wonder what I should do. I thought as I wandered through the corridors. First... Alright, now I'm just gonna be exploring, I guess. So I'm gonna do the dolphins merry-go-round. I have the choice of, like, the merry-go-round, the fish gondola, jellyfish gondola, the warehouse control room. I'm gonna do... It's just to do the dolphins merry-go-round first. And it's a map of... okay. The merry-go-round. Several dozen dolphins were connected in a circle. That I have to talk about this all the time. <laughs> there were no horses, no carriages, there were no children's voices, and the blue ocean was just one paneling of wall away. We were all trapped in that place. I think that it was hard to believe that the scenery spreading before me was a reality. What am I doing here? A thought had popped into my mind. What I was experiencing there seemed so much more bizarre to me than the fact that I had lost my memory. In other words, my doubts of the past were less than my sense of unease about the present. I was overcome by a sense that my existence was floating away. Hey, kid! Are you spacing out there? I was peeking out... Uh, you was peeking out at me from the shadow of a rock. Not exactly. Really? Oh, that reminds me. How are things with Sugumi? Well... In a nutshell, it was like we whiffed. What do you mean? We started with light conversation about how old she was, where she lived, if she was hungry. We were biding our time, waiting for the right pitch. Ultimately, Mayo asked her straight out, why are you so mad? And what did she say? I said we whiffed, right? It was like we waited and waited for a good pitch, but we didn't get anything, so we swung. So it was a big zero? I don't know if it was a zero, but we sure didn't hit a home run. Um, yeah. All we, all we can do is wait for her to get careless and throw the right pitch. 
and get her out. No, get a hit. Huh? I just wanted to get a sense, to feel what she's all about. Reasons aside, she's just something unpleasant about being, there's just something unpleasant about being disliked. Saying that, you started walking. I got on the platform of the merry-go-round and petted the fin of the dolphin. I followed after you and jumped on the back of the dolphin. Kid, incidentally, what are you doing here? I was looking for everyone and I went to the security office, but no one was there. What about you, you? What are you doing? I was hanging around this area near the merry-go-round. I just wanted to be alone, so... Alone? You cast a lonely look at the dolphins as she patted its smooth skin. Hey, why doesn't this dolphin move? Probably because it's not turned on. There's, There's got to be like an operating panel around here somewhere. You think if I turn it on, then the dolphins will move? Yeah, probably. And swim in the ocean and catch fish and stuff? What? I, I was just thinking, because inside Lemu there are dolphins and whales and fish and clams and octopuses, and there's even jellyfish and sea monsters, but none of them are real living creatures. Of course not. They were all made by people. I wonder... For example, deep in the forest, it would have been harder to find something that's not alive than something that is, right? There are trees and grass, birds, bugs, soil, and little living creatures inside of it. Everything is alive. But how about here? The only thing that is alive in this vast space is us. And they call this an underwater paradise? A utopia? Um. So, this utopia, living things are outnumbered by non-living things, which in a way means we're, we're intruders in this world of the dead. You petted the dolphin. The dolphin's deformed plastic smile didn't move at all. The steel rod was stuck into its belly. Do you hate Lemu, you? Well, it's hard to say. It's not like I dislike it. But you liked it enough to start working here, right? No. No, you didn't? No. Well, then why? With my question, you tilted her head. She just clammed up and started wandering around one of the dolphins. Finally, her feet stopped and you quietly faced me. I'm looking for something important. Something important? A clue about my father. Huh? Well, actually, my father worked in the Research and Development Division of Lenu. Research and Development? I didn't know the... Uh, I don't know the details. It seems like my father made the Lenu program. Lenu? Lenu? It wasn't that Lenu's central computer? Yeah. Of course he didn't do it alone. He's one of the members involved in developing the project. Huh. Is that so? But what do you mean by clue? My father... My father disappeared one day. What? He just went missing. When? He... He's been missing as long as I can remember. It was like I was one year old. Seventeen years ago. So, you don't remember your father? No. I've only seen pictures and movies of him. I don't even really have any memories. Everything I've just told you, I heard from my mother. But why? Why did he disappear? If I knew that, I wouldn't have come here. What do you mean? The last time my father was seen in Lemu. I... So I thought that if I came here, maybe I would find some clue about my father. But it seems my mother already given up, so I can't count on her. My mother has already convinced herself that my father is already dead. The word dead had a heavy ring to it. You looked straight up at me, her eyes watered. But, you know, I believe. And you know, I know that my dad is still alive somewhere. He has to be. My father just went missing, and his remains were never found. I couldn't find any words. I didn't know what to say to her. She might have been waiting for me to say something like, You're right, he's probably alive somewhere. But I couldn't say it. I just nodded and I couldn't even look back into her eyes. 
Finally, we promised to meet later in the conference room and split up. I thought I would go somewhere else. All right, what do we got? We got jellyfish gondola, the warehouse, the control room, the security office. Let's go to the control room. Woohoo! I went to the control room again. What's up? Any progress? Unfortunately, no. It appears that even Lemay is not able to accurately gauge the situation. <laughs> I need a sip. <sighs> this is... It is something that would normally be unthinkable. Oh, that reminds me, Sora. Did you know? No? Know what? That Yu's father made Limit. Huh? Is that right? That's news to me. Of course he didn't make it all by himself. She said that her dad was a member of the development project team. Is that right? That is very interesting. By the way, why is Lemit called Lemit? Oh, I haven't told you? No, I haven't heard. Lemit's proper name is... Medlik Medizin Motiv... Ver Hakarin Intelligent is Hern System. That is its name. Can you imagine if she said it the way I just did? <laughs> like she struggled so hard. Could you imagine? You can, because I just did it anyway. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Can you give it to me one more time? Please don't make me say it again. Oh my god. Liblik Medicine Multiver Tharin Intelligentes Turn System. That is its name. What language is that? Not German. It is <laughs> not German. Sora says it's German, but it, it, what I said was not German. I'm so sorry. Um, what does it mean? The first part, Liblik Medicine indicates the name of the pharmaceutical company. The bit after that means something along the lines of Parallel Processing Artificial Intelligence System. The first letter of each word created to the acronym LIMIT, so they call the system LIMIT. Uh, <laughs> I see. Hey, there are two things I wanted to ask you. What might they be? That lib bl uh, What is it again? Oh my god. Liblik medicine. In Japan, in Japan, in Japan, it's known as Liblik Pharmaceuticals. So, what is the relationship between Liblik and Lemu? The company managing the theme park is called Lemu. <laughs> and the largest stockholder is Liblik Pharmaceuticals. I see. So, essentially, I guess that Liblik is the right to say whatever happens at Lemu. I suppose that is a reasonable interpretation. The origin of the name of this theme park, the official line that is named after is the Phantom Continent of Lemuria. But actually, I've heard that it is just a combination of the first letters of Leblik Medicine and Utopi. <laughs> Utopi. Okay. Utopi means utopia. In other words, Leblik created this place to be a dreamlike utopia. So that, that's why they named it that. A utopia, huh? And what was your second question? Um, well, it's about German. No. German? Yeah. You said that, you said that Lemu's official name is in German, right? And all around Lemu are these German signs and stuff. I just wondered, why German? That's because Leiblik Pharmaceuticals is a joint venture between a Japanese and German company. It is the headquarters in, uh, its headquarters are in Frankfurt, and the majority of the officials are German. So that's why it's all in German. Leiblik Pharmaceuticals has a pretty strong relationship with Lemu then, huh? Since I'm asking, can I ask one more thing? Go ahead! Why did Leiblik Pharmaceuticals want to run a theme park anyhow? 
I mean, they're talking about labeling pharmaceuticals. They make medicine, right? That doesn't seem to have anything to do with the theme park. And, and this right here in the middle of the ocean, why go through all the trouble of... Because... Because... I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. What? Why not? It is confidential information, but we know. It's because they had a lab underneath the theme park. Confidential? <laughs> what in the- Who could possibly- Who could I possibly tell? I can't imagine that a kid like me finding out caused any damage. You really can't tell little old me? Sora had gone quiet and wasn't answering. Okay, I understand. I'll just forget about it. I'm really sorry. It's all right. You don't have to apologize. I just have to keep the secret as part of- You have to keep the secret as part of your job, right? There's nothing you can do about it. Silence everywhere. All right. I'll tell you one thing. Limu does not rely on energy provided from the- from its outside, but generates all of its energy in this complex. And directly under us, at a depth of 119 meters, is the seafloor. There is a thermal vent on the surface of the seafloor where the water of several hundred degrees is pumped out and heat from that is used to operate generators. I waited for the rest of the explanation, but Sora didn't say anything more. And? What does that have to do with what we were just talking about? Sora let the question go. Do you mind if I get back to work? Oh, ah, uh, sorry to bother you. I gave up and left. Lemu was controlled by a Japanese-German joint venture called Leiblik Pharmaceuticals. Why would they build a theme park? And what could it have to do with the fact that they generated their own energy? I left with that mystery spinning in my mind. I thought I would go somewhere else. So I have the jellyfish gondola, the warehouse, and the security office left. Uh, let's do the warehouse. Oh, wait, no. Sorry. I went to the control room. Let's go to the security office. Oh, Takeshi. I was surprised upon returning to the security office. Takeshi was there. I wonder what he's up to. He had both hands on the operating panel and was staring at the monitor intently. I was about to call out to him, but I hesitated. The gaze that Takeshi had leveled on the monitor. It was so intense that it made my spine tingle. He had the eyes of a hawk scouring the horizon for a prey. Takeshi? I finally got out the words. Takeshi, Takeshi slowly looked back at me. Hey kid, you finally made it! I'm beat from waiting. The look on Takeshi's face was his normal old goofy expression. I felt relieved. What are you doing? He looked so intense that it was scary. Huh? Scary? Yeah, just now you looked scary. That's kind of rude. What's so scary about my face? It's different now. Just before it was scary. Well then how about you show me how scary it was? Uh, uh I think your face was kind of like this. Glaring at the monitor. I tried to mimic how Takeshi had looked by using my fingers to pull back both of my eyes. Wow! What a jerk! <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's not scary at all. Don't pretend like it was nothing. Oh, sorry, I... I was looking for you, my dear. For me? Because you never showed up. I thought I'd call you on the complex uh, intercom system. Huh? I figured you were probably lost somewhere and crying yourself silly. What are you talking about? I was about to say the same about you. You weren't here until the time set up. Where, where have you been until now? Stupid. You're the only one that wasn't here, right? You're totally late. Oh, sorry about that. But you could have waited just like a little longer. Hey, I'm a busy guy. I'm not here to look after you. Busy? You? Yeah, I'm horribly busy. Liar. Until a little while ago, you were wasting time together. Okay, saying nothing to each other. Hey. Can we stop this meaningless conversation? Yeah, it is kind of stupid. Isn't it? We both laughed wryly. But that dissolved any tension that was there in the atmosphere. I didn't get it, but at the same point, I began to feel a little bit more comfortable with him. 
I thought there was something about him. Something like me, maybe. So, how's your condition coming along? Any changes? Saying that, Takeshi sat down in a chair. His eyes were the same height as mine. Any changes? You mean my memory? Okay, well, that might be it for now. <laughs> Damn. I don't know why it's not doing it. It's not letting me do anything. Oh, you know what? I think I know what happened. I think my keyboard died. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Anyway, thanks for joining. Um, what an interesting time we had. Okay. Goodbye!